Hi everyone, I'm Sanjana and I have Peter with me today to talk about how to make a great video resume to stand out in the job market. Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Super excited to uh, talk about uh, B2B marketing and anything clip hire and uh, video resume related. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. I'm, I'm really excited to listen to you talk about video resumes, especially because the job market is crazy right now. And the only way to stand out is to get rid of the standard resume and switch over to video resume, right? So let's talk about that. And yeah. just to give a little introduction about Peter. So he's currently the head of growth at Clip Hire. And uh, today he's going to give us a lot of video resume tips to land a job. So shall we get started? Definitely. Absolutely. Awesome. So um, let's start uh, with your journey so far. Like, where did you start and where are you now? Can you uh, talk a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah, definitely. I think that that's actually a, uh, it's a great question because my journey is actually very particular to kind of what you had mentioned before. And that's actually something that I could touch base and talk about a lot. And I think it's actually really, really relative to what it is that I'm doing now and what we're kind of trying okay. to accomplish at Clip Hire. So to give you a little bit of uh, context where, where kind of where it all, my story kind of where it began. So I was working for a software company um, out in, I was in Chicago, but the company was out in San Francisco. I was like a sales enablement sales trainer. So the company okay. that we had been, that I had been doing is we outsourced a lot of our sales reps out in Pakistan. So I was, oh, okay. I was training, um, I was like a sales enablement and sales trainer for our over our offshore team in Pakistan. So I was training just like our sales reps, our outbound exec uh, AEs and everything like that. Um, I had been working there for about 10 months. That was really the first job that I had when I realized like, Hey, I found a passion for something like I'm really good at this. I found a passion for this thing. I love working with people. I love training people. I liked sales, but I liked training people for sales more than I liked actually doing the sale side of things. Right. Okay, so yeah. March 31st, 2020 comes around. I get laid off because of COVID. So I lose my job because of COVID and I was just shelled right? I didn't know what to do. This is the first time I'd ever been laid off from a job. I was like, wow, I actually found a job that I had a passion for that I actually like to do. And all of a sudden the entire world shuts down. I was yeah. a mess, right? So I was unemployed for two and a half months. So okay. I had kept, I had kept really a strict documentation of my job search. I had applied to 200 jobs in two and a half months, okay. I come across, I come across Ravi and Smart Deck Solutions, right? So I find uh, Smart Deck Solutions on LinkedIn. I apply. I have this interview with Ravi, right? A little bit of an unorthodox interview, you know what I mean? Ravi, he's a heck of a guy, nicest person in, in the world, yeah. you know what I mean? So I really liked having my interview with Ravi because he was a really nice guy. So he's like, "Hey, you got the job." It's there on the table nice. if you got, if you want it. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like I'm unemployed for two and a half months. I need a job. This is a sales position. It's something that I know to do. I'm going to have a team of account executives. I've trained sales reps, you know, managed teams before. Let's do it. So that's kind of where things really kicked off. I had been working with Smart Deck Solutions for a couple months and I'll, I'll never forget. I get a calendar invite from Robbie about it, it says like um, clip hire in it, right? So I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm Googling clip hire, right? Like clip hire this, what, what is clip hire, right? I figured it was a platform that we were gonna be using for smart deck solutions, right? Cause it, you know, Robbie, um, you know, he, he's like, hey, we're using this tool for you know, our emails, this tool for our sales yeah. process. So I just thought clip hire was just another tool that we were gonna be using. So I'm Googling clip hire this and finding the social medias, the social media, it's like, nothing on it. There's no website. So I'm sitting here thinking, and I'm like, what, what obviously like, what is this clip hire? What's this meeting entail? So all of a sudden Robbie's is like, this is clip hire. Like, this is an idea that I have, you know, yada, yada, yada. Some other people that are in the meeting as well. It's me and my 
three other employees and everyone's like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. And I remember I'm sitting there in the back of my mind and I'm like, this is a great idea. Like, this is an absolutely, this is gold. Like what an awesome idea for what an awesome time that we're in. And it kind of just kicked off from there, right? After a while, I'm, I'm messaging Ravi like, hey, this is a really cool idea. I'm sending him ideas of like what we can be doing with clip hire. And it just kind of started coming into fruition. And just one day the, the idea just kind of took off and I just showed him a lot of enthusiasm that I was really interested in. I was really passionate about where clip hire could go. Um, mm-hmm. And then we're here. And it, it's so crazy about kind of how fate works, right? Is because, you know, when I was unemployed, I wish I had a platform like clip hire. And yeah, that's right. Fate, fate is a crazy thing, right? And I think everything happens for a reason. And I think me sitting here today talking to you about clip hire, I wouldn't be here today if I wasn't unemployed and I was without a resource like clip hire. And it's crazy that I'm here working on a website and a platform where little did I know, looking back a little over a year ago, I wish that I had. Um, yeah, exactly. So that's kind of kind of my story about how relevant Clip Hire is to me and where Amazing. my passion comes from building, you know, building the company and you know, kind of where we're at right now. Great, great. And for those who don't know what Clip Hire is, do you want to uh, like yeah. give us an intro about Clip Hire? Yes. Yes. So Clip Hire, we are a video-based employment platform. So we allow job seekers to create a video description to supplement their resume and their professional history. Um, you know, we know obviously there's a lot of information on people's resumes that maybe they can't include, or maybe they're unsure if it's appropriate or professional to include, but there's also that information could help you land an interview or get a job, right? So we want you to, we want to be able to provide a platform for job seekers to be able to include any and all information that they would think can help them land an interview and land a job and put that in their own words. Um, And then same goes for the employer side. So we also have the video aspect for job postings as well. So, you know, if you're a, a sales company and you're hiring for 15 SDRs, you know, why should, somebody apply to your SDR position versus your competitor across the street, right? If you think you're setting yourself apart as a company by just including three paragraphs on why you're such a great company and why somebody should apply to an entry-level position, you know, with this current climate in the job market, you're missing out on quality candidates because you're not doing anything different to attract talent to be working at your company. Um, so we have that video aspect for companies to include a video to supplement the job description, to kind of help set themselves apart from um, you know other competitors and other companies hiring for similar positions. Great. And like, do we have any specific format that uh, an employee or the recruiter should follow to create a video resume. How do we go about that? Yeah, so you can you can create the whole entire thing on our platform directly. So in terms of okay. format, you know, it's really going to be based on people's preferences, and I think it's going to be a little bit different. Mm. Uh, certain things are going to apply differently if whether you're a job seeker or you're an employer. To be honest with you, so you know, if you're a job seeker that video could be about whatever it is that you want. Um, You know, a big thing that I tell people is just get creative, right? You know, let's say, you know, for you, let's say you're using Clip Hire and you just want to create a funny, quirky, clever video that really has nothing even to do with your job history. You know, if I'm a recruiter and I come across your your video and your video is just funny and kind of makes me giggle, and I'm so all of a sudden I'm like, you know, want to know what? I am going to get her in for an interview because that was just a really clever video. It had nothing to right. do with her resume. You know, it could be something just like that. Or, you know, it could be about your passions outside of work that relate to your work experience. It could really be anything like that. As for the employer side of things, what that's really going to come down to is we give people an option. You know, they could upload a video specifically for that job posting or if they just also just want to upload a generic pre-recorded professional video that they created okay. about their company as well, they can upload a video like that too. So the video does not have to be for the employer side. The video does not have to be specifically tailored to that job posting. It could, it really just depends on the role, right? If it's an entry level position, like a, you know, a HR generalist, maybe you're not going to have as specific of a video. Maybe it's going to be more broad about your company. If it's a higher up position, project manager, product manager, maybe you are going to want to have more of a specific 
video mm -hmm. created for that job posting to whatever your preference is um, as the recruiter, as the recruiting manager, whatever it may be. Got it. Now, like, how does that work? Like, I upload a video and then you give mm -hmm. me a link and I copy paste that link in the job portal. Is that how it yeah, works? Yeah, no. So no, actually it's straight up going to be right on top. So the, the it's all on one page. So how the process works on the back end, right? When you're recording that video. So you create the job posting, right? The name, yeah. title, location, everything like that. You click next. From there, boom, your video. You can either record the video or you can upload the video. Once you're done doing any of that, you click next, then that's when you start putting in the job description, the pay rate, location, all that stuff. Yeah. Boom. Then, then you save that. And then when you save and post the job physically, it's going to be like any kind of normal job postings that you see, but right on top of the job posting is going to be the video. So you click play, you can watch the video, then you can scroll down, you can read about the job description or any other information that maybe you need that the video doesn't describe for you. And then boom, you can apply to the job right then and there. So it's all going to, it's all on one screen. So once you record that video, you click next, we create the whole page for you so that everything that you need as a job seeker that you're going to want on that job posting video related and about the job boom is going to be all right there great great uh like i i'm getting a lot of questions uh in my head yeah, now please so <laughs> like uh like what tips do you have for people who are video shy i know a lot of people yeah. are hesitant to be totally. in front of the camera and speak right like how do you convince them to create a video resume yeah so my biggest thing is I want people to think about what those great qualities are about themselves. And I just be yourself in telling it. Um, you know, I think that there is, there's a lot of, the biggest thing that I, I, I don't like about the whole job search process and whether you're unemployed or not, right? There's a lot of just, you know, resume gurus don't include this on your resume you know you talk to one person and they're like oh well it's un unprofessional to include this on your resume and then you talk to another person right and they're like oh no i would totally include that on your resume and it's like depending on who you talk to they'll tell you different answers and i think that that creates a lot of anxiety for people um you know a lot of people second guess themselves and you know it it, it puts a damper on your job search and it makes people second guess themselves. And like I said before, adds a lot of anxiety. And for those people that are shy on camera or do worry about those things, yeah, I want people to think to themselves, you know, aside from your resume, right? If you're talking to your brother, your sister, your friends, right? And you've all been there before. I'm sure you've been there before. I have too. And you've, you, you've, you know, been denied from a job or you didn't make it to the second round of interview and you sit there and you're just like, man, you know, if I can get in front of that person and if they can talk to me and hear me speak exactly. and hear me, hear me out, because I know I'm so good at X, Y, and Z. And if they were able to see that, or if they were able to hear that, I know that I would have had a better chance to get that job or get that interview. That is what we want you to include in that resume. That's the information that we want you to share with recruiters. That's the kind of stuff that those people, it's, it's either not appropriate to put on a resume or, you know, they don't know a spot to put it on their resume or they can't convey it in words on a piece of paper, right? That's the type of stuff that I want people to include in those videos because it's going to set yourself apart and it's going to help you differentiate yourself from everybody else and, and, and put more personality and character than just what's on a piece of paper. And I think once people start realizing that, there's a sense of empowerment, right? Because now it's not, oh my gosh, I don't know what to put on a video, video resume. I'm scared. It's holy cow, I can finally put things into my own words that I've been yeah. wanting to this whole time that's pre been preventing me from getting a job or it's been preventing me from getting that next interview or anything like that, right? It's not a, oh, I'm getting judged from a video. It's, I can finally put it in, put things in my own words and stop relying so much on, on words on a piece of paper. Um, and then yeah. once you have that mental shift, it's very empowering. 
and it's very liberating in a sense because you're, you're it's it's in your it's in your own hands at that point when you have that video aspect attached to your resume. Great. I I also think that video creates trust and totally it gives you an authenticity right to the to the recruiters. Like when you send out a video, right. it creates an authenticity and they can see your face. So like there are a lot of chances that they might want to speak to you and understand right. more about you because you put that effort to create the video and send it to them. That right. that makes a clear difference. Yeah. Right. And even if the video, even if they don't watch the video, right? Even if the recruiter doesn't watch the video, even the simple fact that you made that effort to create the video yeah. could be the difference between you getting an interview exactly. and you not getting an interview, right? They yeah, may not exactly. watch the video, but they're going to be like, holy cow, they just made a video for me. Let's get them in for an interview. That's awesome. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. And there are chances watch, that they'll helped. just, yeah, there are chances that they might just share your video to the entire right. team and they, they'll, they'll watch it and they'll be like, who is this person? We want to talk, talk to him or her. Like right. there are chances that it's that might it's, happen. It's, it's, it's limitless, right? What if they have friends at HR in a different company and they're like, look what this person just did. Yeah. And then all of a sudden yeah. they're like, their friends like, oh, wait a minute, friends. I love that video. And we're hiring for, I think that person would be a good fit for my role at my company. Let me talk yeah. to him. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's limitless. It truly is limitless. The possibilities that that video could do for you when you're looking for a job. Great. Great. And, uh, I think I should have asked you this before, like, why do you think video resumes work? I think timing is obviously everything, right? Um, you could argue that video resumes don't work, didn't, couldn't work five years ago, right? You know what I mean? That's what, yeah. I, I just think that the current climate of everything with remote work, mm -hmm. video is just becoming so normalized, right? Like we're yeah. so we're so comfortable getting in front of videos because of having webcams, video interviews and things like that, TikTok, Instagram, right? And that's obvious, obviously a lot of the people that we're marketing to, you know, Gen Z and millennials, you know, who mm. grew up in that climate of being on video, right? Like we had mm. Vine when we were in high school. Now kids have TikTok. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I'll create an Instagram reel of, you know, somebody will create an Instagram reel of them going grocery shopping, right? And it'll get 500,000 views on Instagram of them just going shopping. And you know, you think of somebody who has a vlog, who posts vlogs on YouTube for a living, you don't, you, you think that they're probably obviously going to be comfortable creating a video resume with clip hire, right? Because they, they film every single aspect of their life Yeah. <laughs> and the vlogs that they create, you know what I mean? So I just think that it works now because of the climate and the type of, you know, social media that we have and, you know, the younger generations, how they're so used to, you know what I mean? Like my nephew, I got a nephew yeah. that's five and he sits on an iPad all day. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, can, he's on, I, I can totally he's gonna understand. Be on Instagram. Yeah. He's going to be on Instagram before you know it. So watching people make videos is going to be so normal to him. So a video resume is not going to be anything crazy to him once he's looking for jobs right. in you know, 13 yeah. years. You know what I mean? So um, <laughs> timing is everything. And I think that we, we, we pivoted at the right time to kind of kick this thing off. Great, great. And I just read on the news today that Instagram will be uh, introducing, creating a video selfie when you sign up for the account. Like when you sign up for right. Instagram, you'll have to create a video selfie. Otherwise you exactly. won't be able to sign up. Right. Like it's crazy uh, where video market is going. Right. And LinkedIn's got the feature too on their mobile app. Like you can create a video introduction instead of your picture, right? You click their picture, then it's a video yeah. introduction of them saying hi. Right. Um, you know, so it's... Um, everyone's pivoting and everyone's shifting towards that video aspect, so. Nice, nice. All right, and uh, how are people uh, adapting video resumes in the US and how do you compare that with the rest of the world? Yeah, so, you know, it's kind of tough for me to speak on, you know, really the rest of the world. I think that- Okay technology obviously you know i know obviously some places they they don't have as much technology in other places that they do maybe in the united states i will say though i am noticing um a lot of people from like europe and the asian countries in europe and yeah. european countries 
are yeah. coming to our platform a lot. Um, okay. You know, obviously, I don't want to make any assumptions or anything like that. But what I can probably may perhaps base myself off of, you know, I think people in other countries are maybe thinking to themselves like, hey, I'm in Europe, or I don't have as many opportunities because there aren't as many companies in Europe as there are in the United States. I need to really do my due diligence and really, really stand out um, mm -hmm. to set myself apart to help find an opportunity because maybe there's not as many job opportunities in my country versus a different country. So I think that people in other countries are starting to pick up on that a little bit. We do have a lot of users, like I said, from a lot of European companies that have created pro or countries that have created profiles with us. Um, right. In the United States, I think that people are, it's weird. I'm kind of noticing it's like people want to do the video resume, right? But it's like, you know, when you're getting into cold water at first, right? You kind of dip in your toe and you're like, oh, maybe I'm uncertain if I like this. So I know that I'm watching videos all day on Instagram and I'm comfortable about getting in, in video. And I know that this is going to help me get a job or land a job, but I've never done this before, right? So I think yeah. people are starting to really slowly dip their feet in and then they're, we're going to hit a threshold nice. to where this really becomes normalized. Um, I just think we're really, really early in, in the video resume aspect. Like, I mean, there's nothing, there's no other company that's doing what we're doing right now in terms of, you know, literally having a video on top of your resume. I know people post videos marketing themselves on LinkedIn, like, hey, I'm looking for a job. That's different than what we're doing. You know what I mean? So I think people know that it's there. I think people are hearing about it more and more. Um, people are just a little slow and in, in, like I said, getting their feet wet on, do I like this? Do I not like it? I know it's there. I know it's coming. I know it's inevitable, you know? Um, but I think, yeah, like I said, I think people are just kind of getting their feet wet. I think it'll start picking up once we're able to start For sure. companies to post, post jobs on our platform too. Nice, nice. And I think it's picking up in India as well because mm -hmm. uh, I remember a few people pinging me on LinkedIn and asking me for tips uh, about like how to create a video, like how do I start, what do I say? Right. Uh, because I've done video marketing in my previous organization mm -hmm. uh, for three, four years and they know that uh, I, have, I will have tips for them. So they ping me and they are really taking that effort to create yeah. a video and send it to the recruiters. That is a great difference I'm seeing right now. Even yeah. like, I, I just got a new job now. Like I joined Lead Twitter six months back. Mm -hmm. So when I was hunting for a job uh, six months back, uh, like I was creating videos and sending sending them to the recruiters, and that made me stand out. Exactly. Because they yeah they didn't they didn't see anyone else create video for them, but just uh, you know uh, I I created and sent it to them, and it was like, can we just talk to you because we liked your video and you took the effort and. We can right. surely talk about this. So yeah. Right. right. Yeah, I think that people in people outside of the United States, it seems like to me they're they're a lot hungrier to yeah. stand out and set themselves apart. Exactly. Um, not that I agree with this or not. I think sometimes in the back of people's minds that they have to they feel like, oh, because I'm in a different country, I need to do more to stand out sometimes. Like like I kind of think that's where that comes from. And I, agree, I think that's yeah. why we definitely see a lot of people from European countries, countries in Asia, Asia, Asia Pacific countries, because they feel like they have cards stacked against them. Not saying, I, exactly. I don't think that's necessarily, I don't personally think that way, but I think people do think like that. Um, yeah, that's the mindset, that's a, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a mindset depending on who you are or where you're from. Um, so I yeah. think that they're hungrier to, you know, Hey, I need to do extra, a little extra because the cards are stacked against me. And I think that they find that video resume helpful because kind of like what I was talking about before, right? You know, yeah. there's information that isn't included on your resume that can help you get an interview. And yeah. people can do that with Clip Hire. Great, great. Awesome. Um, so uh, like, do you, uh, like you spoke about Clip hire, like where do uh, like where can people go and create a, a profile with Clip hire? Like, can you can you? Uh, yeah, so they can just go. So for recruiters, like for the, for employers right now, our waitlist is up. So uh, we in the next okay. like this month, 
companies are going to be able to start posting, paying for jobs and post jobs on our platform. It's not just done yet. We're still working on some, uh, some final stuff. Um, so right now you can go on to recruit.cliphire.co um, and then you okay. can view our pricing, view all the tools. There's a fun little video on there so you can get a look at kind of what the platform looks like. And then you can join our wait list um, to get like early discounts on job postings, early access to the platform, then like the general public, extra uh, access to our support team, things like that. Um, and then uh, just uh, cliphire.co is where is the portal for our job seekers where you can just go ahead and sign up directly there on cliphire.co. Um, there's a lot of information on there about video resumes. We also have a blog post on there. It's a blog page on there too, for you to read up on, you know, anything, you know, hiring related, HR related, video resume related. Um, so there's a lot of great resources on our, on our website on cliphire.co. Um, so yeah, right from there on our directly on our website and obviously anything on social media, all the links on our social media page will direct you right to our website as well. Great. I'll uh, give all the links in the description below so people cool. can check it out. Uh, it was great talking to you about video resumes, Peter. Uh, we'll, uh, can, can we do a quick rapid fire if you yeah. have time? Please. Great. great, great. So my first question is, who do you follow the most on so any social platform? Could be LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever. Yeah. So... I will say, so there's a gentleman by the name of Dan Rhodes that I love yeah. following on Twitter. And actually anybody in the business space, I recommend following Dan Rhodes. So Dan was one of the original employees at Amazon working okay. under Jeff Bezos. So oh, he, that's nice. so he uh, was the, one of the original employees on, uh, from Amazon. And he was one of like the first 10 hires of Jeff Bezos. He worked for Amazon for who knows, I don't know, 10-ish years, let's say. Then he went on after working with Amazon, he was one of the original hires for Facebook. <laughs> so he literally went from working for Jeff Bezos to working for Mark Zuckerberg. So he literally built, helped build Amazon. And then when he was done with Amazon, he went and helped build Facebook. Oh. And so the reason why I love following Dan on Twitter is because he'll go on these long threads of he'll just mm -hmm. tell these insane stories about Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg that like you can't hear anywhere else. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's just his personal experiences from like, oh, when I was in, two, in 2001, when Amazon was building their website, like he literally just had tweets out a long thread of a story about how Jeff Bezos did this crazy thing about creating Amazon's website. And it's, it's really interesting to get that perspective on business and uh, somebody who has helped create the startup culture, essentially, you know what I mean? Working for two companies that literally help shape the world of e-commerce and social media. Um, so yeah, Dan Rose, I think it's Dan Rose 99, I think is his okay. at. Um, but yeah, Definitely worth a follow if you're on Twitter and you like reading up on like business and startup stuff. Dan Rose Definitely. is a good follow. Definitely. I'll, I'll get the link from you and post yeah. it in the description below. Right. So uh, what's your favorite book or podcast? I guess I can answer both of those. My favorite book, um, it's tough. I, I would probably say Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Um, have, are you familiar with that book or no? Yeah, uh, yeah, I know, but I've not read yeah. the book. Okay, so Shoe Dog, it's the story about Nike, like how Nike was started. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the reason why I like that book so much, and especially working for a company and like where the stages that I'm at with Clip Hire and kind of in my career, it really resonates with me. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's Phil Knight is the author, but he's also the CEO and creator of Nike. So mm. the book basically just starts him just fresh out of college. And he's this kid. Okay. He doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. He's an accountant, but he hates it. Um, he ran track at Oregon. And he's just like, one day is like, I just want to sell gym shoes for a living. And this kid, he literally just like goes to Japan and goes to a shoe manufacturer. And it's like, yeah, I work for this big athletic brand company and he's basically lies and it's like yeah I work for this big athletic athletic brand company in America and we want to sell your shoes and this Japanese manufacturing company like buys it 
and is like, okay, we'll give you our shoes. And like little does this company know he's just a kid selling shoes out of his parents' basement. Um, and that's kind of like where the whole just do it mindset comes because he's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep on selling shoes, survive in advance, keep selling shoes, get a new loan from, a, from the bank, sell more shoes, get another loan from the bank, sell more shoes, get another loan, sell more shoes. And he just kept doing that. And so all of a sudden, boom, Nike was Nike. Um, wow. And it's just such an amazing story because you're like, he literally had no idea what he was doing. He didn't, he didn't have right. all this big, you know, business experience, things like that. And he just kept selling shoes until he sold out his shoes and had enough money to buy more shoes to keep selling. Um, so I would say that shoe dog is definitely probably my favorite book. Um, and then my favorite podcast I would probably say is, um, so I'm a big, I'm really big on like Bitcoin and like cryptocurrencies and things like that. Um, that's kind of like my hobby outside of work. And my favorite right. podcast is, uh, this, um, it's called we study billionaires and okay. they have like a branch, like a, a, like a Bitcoin branch with this guy named Preston Pish. Um, that he just basically has a podcast branch on uh, we study billionaires, just anything, anything and everything Bitcoin. And it's probably one of like the smartest dudes that Preston guy is probably one of the smartest economic minds that I've ever heard and I've ever followed. So, um, I'll give you kind of the, the link for that podcast as well. If you want to put in the comments too. Please do. Yeah, please yeah. do. Great, great recommendations <laughs> there. Thank you. Um, all right. So the last question is, let's say hypothetically or getting your career started, what would you tell to yourself? What would I tell myself? That's a great question. I would tell myself to not settle. Um, the way that in, I, I was one of those people out of college where I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had no clue what I wanted to do. Um, I took a job out of college that um, um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I was a freight broker. So I worked for like a third party logistics company. They're really big here in the US, especially for entry level okay. uh, kids out of college. Um, and, you know, I, instead of finding out what my, instead of taking my time out of college to find what my passions were, um, I just settled for some job that I knew I wasn't going to like in an industry that I had no interest in, just because I thought that I had to just get a job out of college. And I never should have done that because you want, I delayed my, my professional growth and, you know, I, I was doing something I hated. Um, you know, I was confused. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And I think that that I did that just because I really just settled for something because I was like, Oh, if I don't have a job out of college, I'm a failure. And I'm just going to figure it out as I go for some, with, in this dumb job that I didn't want. And I wish I never did that. I wish I took my time and I didn't settle. And I took my time to find what my passion was um, to make sure that I was just making the right decision for myself. So that's probably the biggest thing that I would say to people is don't settle. Don't just take a job because you feel like you have to take a job, right? Um, take your time to figure out who you are and what your passions are. Um, and run with it and just be relentless in, in figuring out and, and building off of that of what your passions are until you're successful. Great, great advice. Thank you, Peter, for that. Uh, I think I've run out of all the questions. So thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I loved your answers, your energy and enthusiasm throughout the conversation. Um, so I'll uh, give all the links that you mentioned in this video in the description so cool. people can uh, check that out and I'll, I'll also give your LinkedIn profile in the description so people can connect with cool. you later if they want to chat yeah. about video resumes totally right. thank you thank you thank you Peter it was nice talking to of you of course thank you so much for your time I had a blast speaking to you and I'm um, looking forward to uh, watching the podcast great great thank you